Eons Jay here. Welcome to Eons of Battle. I have accidentally collected 2,000 points of Death Guard. I didn't know I had this much stuff, but really, when I got it all out, because for some reason, you know, I was taking a look at my Death Guard army, thinking about what, what I could do, what direction I could go to actually get it finished. This is 1,800 points of Death Guard. I am so close to a proper army, although I don't think that this right here is an army that anybody would take. And only a few things are painted. I painted up my first Death Guard. I just randomly bought one of the blind bags. And then I painted it up with a recent paint set I got a hold of, Imperial Hobby Paints. And so I limited myself to only using the, col the paint colors that were in that paint set. And not too long after, this company went under. So the colors that I use for my Death Guard that I love so much and give me the look I love, their, their days are numbered. I sure I could probably figure out some pretty good lookalikes, but no. This is a Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium situation. When these dropper bottles are empty, my Death Guard army is finished. And paint goes a really long way. I do a kind of a watercolory, a weird, I paint these guys unlike anything else I paint. I actually feel like they're a little bit more grim dark, a little bit more bland shitsu, because I always tend to lean towards just classic heavy metal paint schemes. Everything is the color it should be. With these guys, I just take my base colors, orange, blue, and green, and I just slap the paint on, just kind of wherever. And wherever it ends up, that's what color that part of them becomes. And it makes them look really weird, just a kaleidoscopic, under the sea look. And I love it. I play these guys so much in Kill Team, and that's part of why there's so there's such weird numbers of things actually painted up for this army. But the actually finished stuff is pretty light. I've got nine actual Plague Marines. I don't know how I have nine. I guess it's seven plus two of the blind bags. So yeah, actually I figured out exactly why I have nine Plague Marines. Also, Games Workshop and Plague Marines. You can take them in squads of five, seven, or ten. Seven come in a box. So even though I have a box of Plague Marines, and then I guess I have two more because I have the Christmas Battle Force from a few years ago, 7, 14, 21, I still have a weird number of Plague Marines because I want I want three squads of 10. That just feels right to my brain. Although, let me know in the comments below, maybe squads of seven is the thing and I am set up, ready to go. I also have eight Poxwalkers because that's how many I need for Kill Team. I do like the Poxwalkers a lot, even though they're not crushing it in 40k right now because they don't get access to free weapons like a certain other unit that we'll talk about in just a little bit. I have a single, I call this a Chaos Spawn, but actually this is an old, old school Beast of Nurgle from Warhammer Fantasy, and I love him. He is the weirdest little slug man seal the Hydra monstrosity. Ah, oh, he's so, look at that face. Look at that face. That is like an Invader Zim character right there. He is so great. I, I You can take, I think you can take um, Chaos Spawn in squads of one. I don't think you probably should. I think I would love a squad of four, but you can't take them in squads of four. You can only take them in squads of two. So I'll have to figure out some other way to get some more Chaos Spawn, but I love this model. He's heavy. He is a big old lump of lead. Uh, and that's that's kind of I I never planned on getting into Death Guard. In fact, Death Guard kind of missed me a little bit because back when the Age of Darkness box came out, I was in college pulling all nighters in architecture school. Oh, it was miserable. I don't think I touched paintbrush to miniature for a year. It was horrible. But it, I mean, it's fine. It was horrible. And so I, that box completely missed me, but I've slowly been getting to dip my toes into the Death Guard now and experiencing all of the fleshy, fleshy goodness. And weirdly, I have just managed to get myself to 1,800 points. I have actually painted a Lord of Contagion. I love this guy. This, this guy really solidifies that this color scheme just looks really good and it's gonna look great across an entire collection of miniatures. He is large, he is in charge, his base is covered in maggots. Ah, oh, this, ah, oh, I love, I just like looking at these models so much. I should paint more stuff 
a little bit more stylishly because it's just fun to look at. Instead of being like, yeah, his pants are blue. It's like, no, his pants are orange transitioning into green with verdigris. And then there's something dripping down the back of his leg. I don't want to know what. It's so great. It's so much fun to look at. Also, one fun thing I like to do with my Death Guard is I try not to use helmets. The Death Guard have Mark III helmets, which look really, really good. But I do like the bare head look for Death Guard. I think it just makes them stand out a little bit more because I like to go really, really pale on their faces. A few of the weirder additions I have given to this army is these guys I found at my friendly local gaming store not too long ago. And these are the Greater, Bla uh, greater Drones of Nurgle, Greater Plague Drones of Nurgle, an old, old Forge World unit. They're shrimpies. They're little, sh well, not little. They're kind of giant shrimpies. Ah, uh, I don't know, because these are actually... These could stand in as two different units in this Death Guard army. They could stand in as the Fetid Bloat Drones, or they could be the Greater Plague Drones. And I don't know if I want to run them as the index rules, or if I want to count as them for the other droney vehicle in the Nurgle army. <sighs> it's, yeah, it's all hard. I, the, one thing I absolutely need you guys' help with is how do you make a Nurgle army? I've read the data sheets, I've read the index, but I play Space Marine. I don't play any Chaos. Actually, I have never played a Chaos Army in 40k. I don't think. Maybe in high school, I borrowed, I played my friend's, like, Chaos Undivided Warband, but I don't know. I don't have a lot of vehicles, so I would assume I want to have some vehicles in this army. But yeah, I really don't know anything about starting a Death Guard army, but I'm sure I did it right. I'm sure my random impulse buys over the last three years has built an incredible a tournament winning Death Guard list. And speaking of tournament winning, one thing that I actually lucked into is my Kill Team Blooded team. The Chaos Cultists are actually really, really good right now because of all of their free war gear. And I painted up, instead of 14 units, I painted up 18 operatives for kill team, which pretty much gives me two perfect squads of cultists. So I just paint up two more little guys. And I didn't use my Death Guard colors for these guys, but I actually got pretty darn close with just my normal paints. I think these guys are mostly slap chop speed painted. And so I think these guys actually fit pretty decently next to my Death Guard and will give me an excellent opportunity if Games Workshop ever goes down the Trader Guard rabbit hole, because I wouldn't mind doing a little bit of Trader Guard. I actually found this thing in my collection, which started its life as a Russ years ago in high school. I think I decided to turn this into a terrain piece because it was missing almost everything that you need for a Lehman Russ. And so I took paper and I made this little weird turdy thing out of paper. Trader Guard comes back and I need a Lehman Russ. I would love to just start out with this, this weird kit bash that I don't even remember what I was thinking back in the day and turn this into a proper Trader Lehman Russ. I think that that would be really, really cool and look really good alongside my Blooded. My Blooded also have different bases that I kind of like their Cork Towers, but I think in colors, they match well enough that they would look really good on the tabletop, but are separate enough that they could actually one day diverge into two separate armies, and that would be, that'd be pretty pog. But speaking of things that are absolutely pog, these Greater Blight Drones are really, really, really cool. But one thing I have that I am in love with is the Nurgle Demon Prince. I bought this guy on a whim years ago because Games Workshop was doing another price bump, and I was sure that the days of, of um, Finecast Resin were numbered. So I picked this guy up and then I was, yeah, he left almost immediately after I picked him up. And so I have one. I like the new Demon Prince that they came out with, but it's not, it's not very Nurgly. Sure, it comes with a single Nurgle head, but that is the only difference. This guy is a booger. This guy is fantastic. He is fleshy. He is disgusting. I remember in the sixth edition big rule book for 40K, I almost knew... I, I never, when I, when I read books, especially like reference books, I don't learn page numbers. I learn the shapes of texts Im and images in the book. And so I would like pick up my sixth edition rule book and I would like 
flipped the pages like a picture book until I saw the Demon Prince of Nurgle. And then I'm like, yes, I'm right by the terrain rules. Three more pages and then I'll get to the ruins rules, which I always needed a reference because we were always super confused. But yeah, I love the Demon Prince of Nurgle. And because, you know, the Demon Prince of Nurgle is kind of defunct and I kind of want a Demon Prince with wings. I on eBay bought wings. I bought the Blight Drones, the Nurgle Plague Drones, and I think these wings on a big fat guy would paint such a lovely picture. It's like a bumblebee. It's like, how does he actually manage to fly? He's so big with such little wings. But oh, I'm really, really excited to convert up my Demon Prince of Nurgle. I know that the Death Guard have tons and tons of named characters. I have one in Mortarian, who I'm afraid, frankly afraid of to build and paint. But the Demon Prince, like my, uh, so much of my Warhammer history is stuck in like 2014, 2015 Games Workshop when the Demon Prince was the biggest bad in all of Warhammer 40K. And so I want mine to be incredible. And what's really fun in this kit, this old Warhammer kit, is it comes with a Nurgling riding a little fly. It's pretty much the greatest thing ever. Oh, I, I have this bit. And I, I don't know if he's gonna go on Mortarion's base or if he's gonna go on my Demon Prince's base, but man, is he an absolute cutie. I, this, this kid is pretty old, but model of the year, model of the year right here is little Nurgling on the fly. I also have for this army, some things that aren't meant to be in this army. I guess they, they are and they aren't. I am going to sacrifice some of my Space Marine Rhinos to this army because frankly, I don't take Rhinos and Tactical Marines in my Black Templar army anymore. Uh, these two are unpainted. They somehow never managed to get painted in the decade that I have owned these things. But oh, I'm thinking I'm gonna go to Walgreens and get like a baggie of little kid dinosaur bones, like the ones that you're supposed to buy and then like play with at the beach. And I'm gonna kit bash and convert them into this Rhino to make them look proper Death Guard and proper disgusting. And I have three squads of Death Guard and a bunch of cultists. I might, can cultists go in a Rhino? Probably not. I am going, I might end up sacrificing all of my Space Marine Rhinos. I'll keep two. I'll keep two because there's still a little bit of play with the Razorbacks, but regular Rhinos, I think regular Rhinos have gone the way of the Dodo, but not in the Death Guard. And so I'm actually going to get to use the kits that I actually have. Models that I probably haven't played with since 2017 are gonna come back to the tabletop in 2024. Ah, oh, also, this little guy right here, the Mythetic Blight Hauler, I remember painting this guy up. The power went out at my house, so I actually took him and my paints. I remember I had, I was still using these paints, and so I went to a game, my local Games Workshop, and you're not supposed to use non-Games Workshop paints. And so I remember actually sitting in my car and getting my wet palette all ready to go so that I didn't have to bring in these paints. And so I carried, came in with my little wet palette and I painted for like eight hours in the Games Workshop store because there was no power at my house. And it was getting really, really tiring painting next to a window. <laughs> it was, ah, but that's, that's what makes Warhammer so much fun. I remember this day so well in my mind because, and it's just a little beautiful Death Guard Mythetic Blight Hauler with almost all of the spikes broken off because Games Workshop, when you make a spike, you have to give it a really solid connection to the model, especially when it's made out of the slightly brittle Games Workshop plastic. I think this spike is still going strong. This one is halfway broken off. This one's all the way broken off. But you know what? This is a easy to build kit. So maybe when I buy a few more of these suckers, I'll actually be able to differentiate them a little bit by how many spikes are still standing on each one. The tealy, oceany blue and green on the armor, and then kind of the disgusting pea yellow on all of the spikes. His little maw, which is actually a ranged weapon. Is it the plague spitter? Oh, I love this. I love this. I love Death Guard so much. They're so cool. I've never got to experience chaos very much. I kind of like the good guys in Warhammer 40K, but there is something to just all out chaos. I really appreciate that there doesn't have to be a lot of good reasoning behind things. One thing I would really like to add to this army, although I don't know if I should, 
is a good old fashioned defiler. Did I mention that for Warhammer, I'm stuck in 2014? The Defiler is the one of the oldest minis. It's like the old big bad that Games Workshop made. And the classic thing if you're a Death Guard player is you take you take the Defiler and then you rip the head part off and then you put on the a, a Lord of Contagion. And that would look so good. It would go along with my Demon Prince of a big fat guy in this army. Ah, I think it would look really, really good. I mean, there's the death. The, the Defiler has some play, decent close combat abilities. It actually has the Walker ability where you can move over terrain that's less than three inches tall. So there could be something to it in this army, but I really don't know anything about Death Guard. I'm just really excited for it. And now that I know, if I get everything in my army actually painted up, that I'm ready to rock and roll for playing games, probably not against Sean, because Sean actually has a tailored list that's very, very strong. But, you know, in my games against Nick, where we actually try to have fun, it would be such a good time. Ah, <sighs> more Tarian. I bought this Christmas Battle Force, and it's set. Actually, I don't even know if I've cracked this thing open yet, but more Tarian is, I've seen him a few times in person because everyone loves more Tarian. He's a big, bad butterfly. He is spooky. Oh, I've seen some unbelievably beautiful paint jobs of Mortarian. I've seen people do like the, um, what's the moth that's like the spotted owl moth where it's got eyeballs on the wings. That would look super creepy and super cool. Easily the big, beautiful centerpiece model of this army. And you gotta, you gotta bring Mortarian. Does it make sense that Mortarian shows up to every single battle of the Death Guard? Probably not, but it is chaos. He could be in a few different places at once. And the places that he is, is every single Death Guard army across the world. But man, I, I like the Death Guard a lot. I'm really, really excited for it. I actually have, I don't know why, but I have Plague Bearers. You can ally demon units into Death Guard. So maybe some Pox Walkers and like maybe the Sloppity Bile Piper or one of the weird little like infantry characters that you can take in a Death Guard army or in a, uh, in a demon's army, there might be something. Cause I have, unfortunately, 21 Death Guard. That's, which is between two and three squads. So to fill it out, I don't really want more Pox Walkers, maybe some more cultists, or maybe I just go the demon route. I think I have enough paint to paint up a Death Guard army with quite a few auxiliary demon units. Ah, we shall see. I, ah, I know it's just, I love sometimes creativity, like limitations and rules actually push creativity so much further because I only have, the, this is the paint. This right here is all the paint I will ever use on my Death Guard army. So I kind of have to make decisions. I have to be like, um, you know what? I'm not gonna use the airbrush because the airbrush is really wasteful in terms of paint usage. Hmm, how am I going to mix my wash in a separate palette where I'll inevitably make way too much? Or am I going to mix it right on my wet palette and try to come and try to make only the exact right amount of paint? And what is the right amount of paint? I feel like having those limitations and, and being so precious with my tools actually made these guys turn out way, way better than a lot of my other units where it's like, yeah, I'll half the bottle right into my airbrush for the base coat. Let's see what happens. Having those limitations like makes you work a little bit harder and think a little bit harder. And I feel like it makes you, it gives you a much greater end product. Ah, it's right now, it's a big pile, a junky plastic and a couple of half finished models. Although the previous owner's paint job on these bloat drones, pretty, ooh, it made a cracky noise that scares me a little bit, but it's pretty cool. I do like the kind of disgusting sickly skin that they used, but ah, these guys, Hit them with a little bit of heat gun to get some more interesting dynamic poses out of these. Maybe this little sphincter in the back, little, little, little gunk, a little, little unmentionable coming out the back of it. Ah, oh, that's it. Death Guard is so ridiculously fun. One thing that I would love to know more about, like if somebody out there is a real Death Guard aficionado, there are so many infantry characters. There's the, the tally man, there's the plague spewer guy, there's the guy with the drum. There's like five. Are they, do they all have play? Like, 
because I would buy them all and paint them all. I kind of have one I, one I really fun idea to help them stand out because they essentially just look like an exactly normal Plague Marine is to use one fluorescent color to accent each one. And that would also just help me to distinguish it to remind myself which guy is in which squad so that I can know which ability he's giving to which squad. But which of those guys is good? Like which ones are the must haves for a Death Guard force and which ones I like this, you don't need them. It's like the Cryptex with the Necrons. Everybody goes for the Cryptek with the um, the uh, cloak, the cloak of infinity, and nobody ever really touches a Psychomancer. But yeah, I need to know, I need to know more about Death Guard. It's hard when you're just reading the data sheets. It's like, hmm, do I want mortal wounds or do I want sustained hits? And I'm so bad at math that I don't like to do the math in my head of trying to figure out, well, technically, a 5-up invulnerable save is way better than a 4-up armor save. When, in reality, I don't like to think about Warhammer that way, which is probably why I never really win games. But I remember reading about Warhammer 40k on 1d4chan in high school, and just having people make statements and being like, this gun is for anti-infantry. Where now we have things that are arguably much, much better, where we have breakdowns where people actually give you a chart and they're like, this is the da the exact damage percentage of firing this gun against this toughness. And then once I'm just kind of reading the chart and I'm like, it's it does 2.5 wounds to a ter Terminator equivalent, but it only does 4.1 wounds to a Marine equivalent. Once that once it, it takes some of the fun out of the game for me, because if it's math, I would like to just let play a computer game where the computer does all of that work for me. And for tabletop wargaming, I like to just paint goopy, poopy plague marines and march them forward and let their contagion grow. Because the special ability of the Death Guard is as the game progresses, bubbles of plague appear around all of my units and they actually negatively affect my opponent's models, which is such a genius ability. It's so flavorful and it's so much fun. It's like the opposite of the Leagues of Votan, where the Leagues of Votan just have a bucket of tokens that they can hand out and be like, okay, everybody I handed a token to, it's minus one. It's not fun, I guess. It's grudge tokens, so it's like, mm, I don't like those Chaos 8 bounds, so they once, they called me a mean name. They made a Yo Mama joke, so they get a plague. It doesn't feel as much fun as just the plague growing. I've read novels that include the Death Guard and just the terror of just the landscape turning to just ash and goo. Ah, it is very flavorful and very fun. The Death Guard are for sure my favorite flavor of chaos. It could change if Games Workshop ever decides to do Slanesh, but I don't. At this point, it seems it's, it's probably inevitable because it is a faction in Warhammer 40k, but man, they haven't touched it or even teased it by now. It's hard to believe it'll ever happen. They ain't putting Slanesh into 40k 11th edition launch box. They're not going to do that. But they did do it for the Death Guard in 8th edition. One other super random thing that I happen to have, and I don't know where it came from, and I don't know what kit this could possibly have come out of, but I have a Warhammer Fantasy Plague Banner. It's really cool. It's got lovely tatters and it's topped with a little fly. So I'm going to have to find the perfect place for this. I don't know if I like banners on uh, flying units, so that's why I probably am not going to put it on my demon prince. Maybe somewhere on Mortarian's base, or maybe if I actually manage to get some vehicles for this army, that would be a lovely place for this old, old lead banner. Really, this banner is more of a terrain piece than an actual like miniature piece. But speaking of terrain, did you know we have tons of terrain over on our Patreon? Over there, we have a new set of terrain every month. This month is the modular Gothic buildings. These impressive structures are designed with competitive war games in mind. They're the perfect size, shape, and have functional windows for all your line of sight blocking needs. And to spice it up even more, we have Grimdark Cherubs, perfect for decoration. So folks, and especially those Death Guard players among you, please help me out in the comments below. What should I add to this army? What should I paint next? What should I expedite so that I can start playing like 1000 point and 1500 point games of Warhammer 40k? What are must haves for the Death Guard? What are, you know, what, what about allied in uh, Imperial forces? What about allied in Demon forces? If you guys have a list that you are really enjoying running, maybe bullet point that up and put it in the comments below. I want to know everything 
about the Death Guard. And yes, I will paint at Morty this year. Ah, <sighs> gonna have to clear my schedule. It's gonna be a project. Thanks for watching.